Hello, Cell and Genetic Biology 230 at Tuskegee University. This is Dr. Chastity Bradford, and I am reviewing Membrane Structure and Function, Unit 2, Chapter 7.2b. Membrane structure results in selective permeability. This is something that we discussed previously, but what does this really mean? We know that a cell has to exchange materials with its surroundings, and that this process is controlled by the plasma membrane. And these membranes are selectively permeable. And they regulate the cell's molecular traffic, just like the signal light that Garrett, Garrett Morgan developed. Plasma membranes are selectively permeable, just as and they regulate the cell's molecular traffic, just as the signal light that Garrett A. Morgan invented. Cell membranes, they're selective, they're gatekeepers. What does a gatekeeper do? They keep people out who they don't want to come in. And they invite in people in who they want in. And that's how I want you to think about this selectively permeable plasma membrane. It's a discriminating barrier of the lipid bilayer. And there are specific transport proteins within it that dictates who, will, who or what will get in and what will come out, what will not get in. Okay. How, what determines what goes in a cell and what it does not go in a cell? Things diffuse or are actively transported. Things are transported across. They move across this membrane based upon size, based upon charge or polarity, and based upon whether or not they must be actively transported and based upon whether or not there are transport proteins there if necessary. Okay, Substances, they don't just move across this barrier indiscriminately. These membranes are selectively permeable. Okay. And movement of a molecule through a membrane depends on the interaction of that molecule with this hydrophobic core. Okay. What does that mean? It means there's some things that can pass through easier than others. What does it mean to pass? What does it mean? Historically, there was this brown bag test that was done. Even within the African American community, there were brown bag tests that were done. They take a brown bag, they put it up to your face as you entered um, or tried to enter a building or tried to enter a community. And if you were darker than the brown paper bag, you couldn't get in. You couldn't pass. Okay? And historically, there were some people who could pass for Caucasian. And they would. They were African Americans, but they could pass for Caucasian and they would. Just to avoid a lot of the pain and, and, and a lot of the barriers that existed in the past, that existed historically. And so I want you to really think about these membranes as selective barriers. Just as those barriers exist even today that we have within the community, there are barriers even today within the African American community. There's still people who don't appreciate the color of their skin. And there's still people within the African-American community who um, look down upon those who are darker skinned. And those who look down upon people who are of lighter skin. But we all were created to do something great. And we all can be great. And it doesn't matter what your skin color is. It doesn't matter what complexion you are. 
What matters is whether or not you're willing to go that extra mile. And you guys, you can do it. You can do whatever you put your minds to. It's not about trying to pass for some other color, but it is about passing this, this class and this course. So do what you can. Don't allow Cell and Genetic Biology 230 to be a barrier for you. Okay? Now, what can pass through the plasma membrane easily? Nonpolar, hydrophobic, hydrocarbons. So again, these small molecules can pass through very easily. Small hydrophobic molecules can pass. They can dissolve in this lipid bilayer and cross very easily. Okay? Carbon dioxide and oxygen, don't we need those things to pass easily? We don't need our system to think about or create a transmembrane protein or produce one for CO2 and, CO and oxygen to diffuse or to cross the membrane. We need it to diffuse rapidly and easily. Okay. Polar molecules, sugars, water, charge molecules, these things cannot pass through the phospholipid bilayer easily. So this plasma membrane is a gatekeeper. And I'm reiterating that small nonpolar hydrophobic compounds, molecules, they can dissolve in this lipid bilayer and cross it easily. Large polar hydrophilic molecules such as water, glucose, they don't cross the membrane as easy. Okay, they're not as easy, okay, easily. Charged molecules, charged atoms, they have greater difficulty crossing this membrane. An example is sodium. So how do these atoms and these charged molecules, charged atoms, that have to pass through this membrane, how do they do it if it's more difficult for them to cross? How do they pass? Can we change the membrane's permeability? Can we increase the permeability of the membrane? The answer is yes. And how is it done? It's done and they pass through by the use of transport proteins. We talk about these proteins that span the transmembrane, these integral membrane proteins. Okay? An example of one are these transport proteins that assist ions in getting through charged ions and making it across the membrane. These transport proteins, they're very, very specific. They allow passage of hydrophilic substances across the membrane. Because remember that core is hydrophobic. So how do these hydrophilic substances cross? Transport proteins. But these transport proteins are specific for what binds to them and moves through. There are different types. Channel proteins are an example of a transport protein. It's a hydrophilic channel that certain molecules or ions can use as tunnels, if you will. Aquaporins are channel proteins, and they facilitate the passage of water. Another example of a transport protein is a carrier protein. It's another type of transport protein. Carrier carries something across the membrane. Channel is functions like a channel or a tunnel. So carrier proteins, they bind to molecules. They change the shape. They bind to molecules, change shape, and they change shape in order to shuttle these molecules across the membrane, to carry them across the membrane. An example is a glucose transporter. So let's look at a pictorial diagram. So if this is our extracellular fluid, okay, this would be the plasma membrane, of course, this would be the inside of the cell. So you see the cytoplasm here. This is the solute, and it's outside the cell, extracellular. How does it get inside the cell? One way is via transport protein called a channel protein. Another type of transport protein, the carrier protein. So this is the solute. It needs to get into the cytoplasm. How does that happen? It binds to this carrier protein. And that, when that happens, it changes the shape of this carrier protein. 
and now the solute is on the inside of the cell. And this binding is very specific. So only a spe the carrier protein for this um, solute, so there's a specific solute that will bind to a specific carrier protein. Okay. What determines the direction of traffic across the membrane? What determines what will enter or exit a cell? Transport mechanisms, okay? And these transport proteins. Now, there are two different types of transport mechanisms. They're passive or active. Passive or active. And three examples of passive transport are simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis, which is the transport of water. There are also active transport mechanisms. Okay. And these mechanisms we will discuss in more detail in our next lecture.